this documentary that you're about to watch is about three grieving mothers from the city of Chester, Pennsylvania, who have each lost their children due to street violence. This footage that you're about to watch can be very emotional to those who can relate. I am Kiana Palmer, and this is In the Eyes of Grieving Mothers. Hi, my name is Yvonne Carrington Payne. Good morning, my name is Beverly Wright. My name is Tanisha Palmer. But people may know me as Kiana. I'm Carla Carrington's mother, and um, I'm uh, in the area of where a uh, tragedy happened 27 years ago. But I'm in the support of, uh, in the eyes of, of grieving mothers for uh, Kiana Palmer. And uh, one of the things I just wanted to say as far as grief is, it's like an enduring, long-lasting thing. And for me to have come here on today, 27 years, it's like a recapture of what happened. And uh, on that particular evening, my daughter was actually preparing to, to go to school go to college and uh, I was so devastated when I heard the news about her shooting not knowing that uh, that she would you know not recover from the bullet wounds and it was a senseless stupid act of violence. Born and raised here in the city of Chester have lived here all of my life I decided to stay here in the city of Chester because of my love for this city Unfortunately for me, my youngest son, Emine Smith, where I am standing here today between 3rd and 4th on 8th Street, is where Emine lost his life to senseless violence. Emine was a young man in the prime of his life. He was an excellent son who loved me dearly. There was no doubt that Emine loved his mother. He was a devoted brother outstanding grandson to his grandparents and loved his sister and his brother. He was also devoted to his nieces and nephews. Emin was a happy-go-lucky guy who did not take life lightly, but he enjoyed it to the fullest. But unfortunately, on November 13th of 25, someone thought it robbery that they should take his life. This documentary is about my life and the legacy of my son, Sharon Eric Lee Cruz. About two years ago, I came up with this, um, this thought. I say it was from God, uh, 2.30 in the morning, to start a, a group. A group with mothers like myself that has lost a child to street violence. So I pondered and said, well, what, what could I call this organization, God? And he said, in the eyes of grieving mothers. So I started a group on Facebook. And gradually, over six months, I have met about 50 other mothers some in the city of Chester that had lost children. And I noticed that we all shared the same pain, the same void, the same emptiness. And the bottom line is that I feel a certain sort of way because I have been a community activist here in Chester ever since this movement has happened. And it seems like things are not better and uh, the bottom line is that I support 
everything that Kiana is doing because she lost her child in another sort of an accident. But the loss of a child is devastating. You never, you never, you never get over that. And the only thing that you can do is join forces with other people that have the similar uh, uh, incidents in their lives that you've had and try to uh, make the city better. And a lot of things that uh, we have accomplished here in Chester, it seems like that there's a force here that won't keep up the positive things for the children for us to go on and live a normal life. There is so much violence that's plaguing our neighborhoods. There is so much disdain and so much unrest with the young people. But no one seems to know how to get a grip on reality because this really is our reality. The reality that we're living in today is that the cowards is what I will refer to them as being. See no problem in picking up a gun and taking someone else's life, but leaving their families left with holes to fill, leaving their children without a father to raise them, leaving a community devastated, leaving us stuck in our homes where we're sometimes afraid to come out. But the God that I serve says that this is not their world, that this all belongs to him. So I thought to myself, what else can I do to help these women? So this is my reason to start in this group or this organization in the eyes of grieving mothers so that I can connect with other mothers, fathers, and families that have lost a child. What happened that night, I wasn't with them. The uh, problem started at the Memorial Park, which is down on Ingle Street. And there was a fight that broke out. And actually, one of my brothers were there. He uh, had uh, witnessed the whole uh, incident. And when they saw the uh, young man fighting, they left there to seek um, safety from what was getting ready to, to, to happen. And they actually saw the guns in some of the young men's like pockets and stuff. So when they left Memorial Park, they came up to um, 9th and, um, what do they call this street? I forgot. 9th and Lamokin Street, because my daughter actually was getting in preparations to prepare for Central State College in Ohio, and they were going to the AM Mini Market. And when they made their turn on Ninth and Lamokin, and they came halfway up the road, believe it or not, they came into the same crowd that they left at the Memorial Park. And they couldn't get by because there was so many people blocking the road off. And when they got out of the co her cousin's car, they backed the car into the um, um, athletic field in the back of the bleachers. And when they got out the car, they came out and asked the people what was going on. And they said these are the same people that were down Memorial Park starting the altercation. And before they could finish talking, they heard gunshots. And they ran side by side to get back in her cousin's car. And they separated. Carla was on the um, passenger side and Marcel was on the driver's side. And they didn't even know that Carla had, had, uh, had even got hit until they were trying to pull off. And when they noticed that she was just sitting there and didn't move, they touched her on the shoulder and they knew that she was shot and they saw the blood on her clothes. Chester, I need to make this plea to you. Where I am here standing today, I'm standing between a school and a church and another church around the corner. These are holy, holy places 
where our children are coming to be educated, where they came to be educated, where people come to worship the God that they serve. And I'm standing here looking at a bullet hole in a sacred place. City of Chester, we have to wake up. We're being held hostage in our neighborhoods, in our, in our communities, in our houses, and we're, we're accepting it. It is totally unacceptable the way that we're living our lives. We're not feeling free or comfortable enough to send our children out to play. Instead of teaching them to go out and enjoy life, we're teaching them to hit the floor when they hear gunshots. That is not a normal way of living. We're teaching them that the life that they're living in the community and the things that they're seeing going on around them now, that it's normal. It's not anything normal about the life that these kids are being exposed to today. Up here, um, this is the last time I seen uh, Sharon. Uh, yeah, I had pulled up and um, I called him to the car right here. <laughs> and he was smiling like he ain't never smiled before. Um, I never would have thought that would be the last day that I seen him. Never. Um, I pulled off. I don't know, about like 10, 15 minutes later, I got a phone call saying, um, your son just got hit by a car. And he lay in the street on Tillman Street. And um, by the time I got up here, I was saying fire department. I seen the cops and the street was blocked off. And everybody was, you know, running up to me saying, um, you know, we don't, we don't think that he made it. We don't think that he made it. And I just kept screaming like, well, what's, what happened? Because I was in a state of shock. And they said, we think Sharon died. Yeah. A guy, I won't say no names, was running to a fight with his girlfriend and went up three stop signs. And Sharon, at this area right here, where he usually played, played up here all the time with the rest of the kids. Um, and he was going across the street with the rest of the kids across the street. And his car coming up at high speed struck him. And it took him from, at this point, up to 13th Street from the impact. Um, when I got to the hospital, they let me go in the back with him. And um, me and his dad went back there and his body was cold. And they were saying, oh, he gonna be all right. We gotta take him to Children's Hospital. Actually, once I got that phone call, I knew that, that when I got that phone call, I knew he was going. You know, it was like something that a mother knows when you get that phone call. So I went to the hospital. We went to, to uh, Children's Hospital up in Philadelphia. And um, they let me lay with him in the bed while he was going. Um, and they asked me that I want to wash his body and stuff, you know, wash him off. And um, before the morgue came up and, and took him. But I couldn't. In the meanwhile, they didn't call the ambulance. Someone in a car rushed her over to the emergency room. And when they contacted me, 
I didn't go at first because I thought she was already dead. But when my family came back to get me and I went to the hospital, they said that uh, they didn't think she was going to make it through the night because of where the bullet had, uh, uh, where the bullet had located in her body. And unfortunately, she did not recover. This happened on a Tuesday and that Wednesday, she was pronounced dead after we told them they could uh, take off the life support. And uh, the things that really hurt me was that Carla was a beautiful, happy person. She had a smile that mesmerized you. And it's been a lot of things that I have did in her memory. I've, I've, uh, uh, I've had a, a street named after her in the uh, place where we live. And uh, I also had uh, the pleasure of uh, a professor from Rutgers University. He uh, wrote a book on about surviving in a uh, distressed neighborhood. And um, even though it's been 27 years, I still be waiting for Carla to come in and tell me she was just on a long vacation. And many of the things that I've done in the past like uh, 27 years, it was things that Carla said that she was gonna do when she came back home because that um, same week, she was due to go to Central State College in Ohio. And that Friday, we had received the letters of where her room was going to be and where we would pick up the keys. And sure, it's been devastating. And every, every um, year, this time of the year, I grieve just like I did 27 years ago. But I have so many good memories of things that we have done to keep her memory alive. And I know that Carla would be very proud of me and what Kiana Palmer is doing because I feel so good about Kiana because she was one of the original Benny High Steppers. Moms, don't be afraid to talk to your sons. Talk to them. We're losing them at record numbers. This is not normal. It's nothing normal about what's going on here in the city of Chester. Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything else will come to you. Bring up your child in a way that you know they should go. And when they depart, they know they have to come back because you've raised them the right way. The nighty mean left home. Our last words and our last exchange together was he told me what he was doing. I said he mean be safe. Watch your back. He said mom, you know I've worked all week. I deserve to go out, and he did. He worked all week, he took care of his son, and he had a right to go out. That was promised him. That was his right to do what he wanted to do on that evening. But our exchange to one another that night was, he mean, be safe, you know I love you. And he said back to me, mom, I'm not gonna be long, and you know I love you too. That is one thing that I can say proudly that the night my son left this earth, he knew, he knew his mother loved him. And I knew my son loved me. I didn't bury him with any animosity in heart. I buried him with a lot of love, but a whole lot of pain and a whole lot of hurt that I still carry today. The hole that's in my heart, it's only one person that can feel that and that's Almighty God. People ask, have you gotten to the forgiveness stage? And I say to them, that's between me and my God. That is not something for you to worry about. But now I go around and I speak on behalf of all the other mothers who can't find the voice to speak on behalf of their children anymore. They've lost their voice because they lost something that was so precious to them. City, wake up. It can be the knock, the next knock on your door could be that knock that you don't want. Don't ever say it cannot happen to me. I never thought it would happen to me. 
but unfortunately, it happened to me. I don't know, Sharon, um, Sharon's death changed my life a whole lot. My reason for starting this organization is to help mothers. and families that experienced a great loss like myself. I would like for people to look at me as a vision of hope and just know that even though with the pain, void, the late night, cries, the wishing, um, the wishing, the, 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 the moments and thoughts of wishing that you could, you know, have and hold your child again. That even though that, that may not ever happen again, you can move on. You could definitely move on. Here. And I was fortunate enough to take the Benny High Steppers to perform in Walt Disney World six times. And a lot of the kids in Chester, they had never left the city before. And that's what Carla always wanted to do. She always wanted to do things for the children that we, uh, that we, ha that they hadn't ever experienced in life. So all I can tell you is that what we need to do, and I'm not standing here saying this because of what happened to Carla. I'm saying this for everyone that has had a loss, whether it be gunshot, any type of violent, that have taken a child's life. You have to really know that you cannot just get involved just because it's not your immediate family. Because we all have to get involved to make this city in Chester a better place to live and the whole world, the whole country. And that's what's wrong. We only get involved when it's facing our families. But we have to get involved because it's just, it's just not right to bury a child. It's, it's like, it seems like that's the worst thing could ever happen to you, is for you to have to bury a child. And uh, I could say in my whole experiences in life, I've had close deaths. My mom passed away, my husband passed away, other close relatives, but the death of a child, it never leaves you. It's like an empty hole, it's a void. A void that you will uh, keep in your life forever. I just want to touch on the young lady that's having the rally, and that's Kiana Palmer. Kiana had a vision, and she's fulfilling that vision. And I am here to stand behind her 100%. I am here along with my organization, Women of Strength United for Change. We are an organization of mothers who, to no fault of our own, we have lost our children to the senseless violence that is now gripping the city. And we want Kiana to know that we support her wholeheartedly and that she should press on. God gave her this vision, and it's a vision that she is out there and she's fulfilling this vision. So let's get behind Kiana. Let's rally behind Kiana because Kiana is also a grieving mother. Kiana lost her five-year-old son, Sharon, by a person who struck him down in the, in the young, young, tender age of his life. And he was her all in all. He was her world. Kiana went through her grief and this is a way to come back and give to her community. 
So we as a community should be getting behind Kiana and supporting her effort in trying to bring us all together. But I will continue to move forward. I will continue to travel all across the world, state to state, city to city, wherever I have to go to reach out and unite with other mothers that experience such a tragic loss like myself. We can only we can only get through this with the help of one another by empowering one another. And as I look at this uh, area, I have bad memories, but I have positive ones too because we organized a drill team called the Benny High Steppers in memory of my daughters. And we practice a lot of times right over there in that parking lot. And uh, I feel that many of the children that have gotten involved in my life that they have learned some sort of a lesson in, you know, having respect and doing the right things to, to one another. But me, myself, at my age, I still have a little bit of spark left in me, and I want to continue to do what I'm doing. So I just want to let you know that uh, in the eyes of grieving mothers, it's a beautiful thing that Kiana Palmer has organized, and she has my soul support. She has my soul support. This the house Sharon was uh, born and raised in. We lived here for about the whole seven years. We first moved into this house in 2000, the year he was born. And um, I was so excited, you know, to be on my own and have my first place with my child. You know, my first, my first child. This place holds a lot of memories, birthdays, um, family events and gatherings. This is where he first learned how to ride his bike. On these, on this, on Teller's place. He would come out here every morning and, um, and just ride. Cause he wasn't really good with it. And I come out here early in the morning with him I come out here early in the morning with him and um, and help him practice how to ride it. So for a whole week we did this. <laughs> and by that following week, he was on the road. He was just going, flying. Yeah, this is it. Development where I was born and also raised roof elbin and homes. Uh, I usually don't like to come out here. Cause it puts you back at that same day and open up the same feelings and emotions of the day that it happened. So I, I try to avoid coming out here, you know, so I don't got to feel it. But one way or another, no matter how you try to block it out, you, know, you will feel it. I hope this process, this, 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 this whole organization and this movement and what I'm doing, I hope that it brings unity all these other organizations and there's people across the world, different moms that experienced this. They only gave him three years. Now he back out on the streets. That's where I gotta come visit my son.
all because of being careless. <laughs> I guess to the mom, you know, at least she can tell her son now to be more careful and cautious. Cause I can't. I can't say nothing to him no more. 